I just got my QT-Rex HHO generator and I'm heading to a friend's shop to have him help me assist in the installation process. It comes assembled and wired. It's not that I don't know how to crimp and tighten, but it does cut down on the time figuring it out. The instructions are clear, but I'd rather have my friend there in case I need to ask him any questions. The first step is to find out where we're going to put the generator. This car has had several types of hydroxy units, so there is a previous location I can use. By stripping the grill out, we can install the cooler. I live in Florida where it's hot all year round. In this weather, all the cells heat up, making the amperage go up, and when that happens, you boil the water. Now we're opening more space by routing a hose differently. I can't stick it on the wall or the fender, so I'm using a 1 16th inch zinc plated AC strapping to build a support. It's going to be around the battery and hold the generator. I already bent it to size and we're screwing it into the engine side panel. Then you attach the tubing to the cooler and slide the unit in place. Screw it in and check how the tubing goes out towards the radiator. The kit came with a couple of grommets to help prevent chafing of the tubes. We're putting them in the holes we drilled to slide the tubing into place. You may have to readjust as necessary, pushing or pulling the grommets in place. Insert one of the clamps that came with the kit, then cut and insert both tubes into the cooler. Tighten firmly. Then we screwed the cooler to a frame in the front end so it doesn't vibrate. The cooler is at the same level as the cell and the pump. That way the fluid will run easily from cooler to cell. Now we're installing the output tubing using a T-connector, followed by a vacuum restraining valve. Already in it is a microparticle filter and the flashback arrestor valve. You're going to insert the T between the PVC valve and the injector housing, and that's where the HHO will mix with your fuel. Rotate the tube to avoid contact with hot metal. Bring the appropriate end towards the tank's barbed tip. There's an overflow trap in the kit that catches any spill like a strainer. It has a valve you can drain and reuse the fluid trap there. The trap is large enough to retain a lot of off-road overflow. The tank has a sloshing suppressor that prevents splashing, as you can see with this colored water. I'm going to insert the outlet tube as we did with the PVC valve side. Let's put the battery back on. Now we're plugging the cell's power using the trailer type connector. We route to conceal and protect the wiring and attach the positive battery pole inserting the red wires ring to the battery terminal. Tighten up firmly, then check again before starting the car. On the black wire of the harness is a shunt. I'm screwing into the metal side of the side panel. The shunt should be as close as you can to where the amp meter will be. The other end will be secured to the negative battery pole. Same with the positive wire. Use the ring connector to attach the battery's terminal. Here are both tightly secured to each terminal. The kit comes with the ground signal and switched power cables. Connect the trailer type disconnects with the ground, the fluid level signal, and switched power. We are grounding everything with a self-tapping screw into the metal frame. Let's route the rest of the wiring towards the cabin and pull it through the alarm wiring hole until it comes inside of the cabin. We take the bottom dash cover out of the way. Next is taking the pre-wired harness that is attached to the alarm light and sliding it through a hole the size of the light barrel we drilled in the plastic dash. The harness contains connections to the power switch, amp meter, and ground. The switch has a red wire that you connect with the power cable of the fuel pump relay, fuel pump, fuse, or any other switched power source. Now comes the amp meter. Connect and insert it into place. 
Make sure you put it where you can see it while driving. We're almost there. Pour into the tank distilled water and the potassium hydroxide as electrolyte in the quantities indicated in the manual. I filled it slightly below the mark so I could add in order to calibrate my concentration. Before starting, check all your connections. Open the vacuum valve a bit. Check every clamp for loose connections. When I turn the key, the amp meter reads below the recommended amperage. And as soon as the engine starts, it should jump to the right reading. After a few seconds, the reading is 30 amps. I'm already producing HHO. Look, the pump helps produce more HHO. It spreads the solution all over the cell's plates rapidly, and the flow of gas is steady. Make HHO for a few seconds with the cap on, and then take it off. There it is. Smell the hydrogen? Let's take it for a spin. First, we're stopping at the pump again. Isn't it painful? It's already $3.50 again, almost 40 bucks to fill it up. I'm recording the odometer reading. The first thing you'll notice is more power, lots of it. You gotta love it, it's flying uphill. This truck is almost 12 years old, running with HHO since 2007. Now it flies. Back from the highway and to the pump again. Let's see how we did. Let's do the math. This car used to do 22 miles per gallon on the highway when new. Today, it does 20 miles per gallon without HHO. With this HHO kit, it does 38 miles per gallon at 70 miles per hour. I'm not sure that's the speed the EPA took those measurements, but this kit is a keeper.